All right, welcome to this overview of ratio analysis. This is uh, Learning Objective 5. There are five categories of, um, um, that we do ratio analysis for. Um, I've got what the book calls it here, and then maybe a more common term. So the ability to pay current liabilities. Uh, this is really our liquidity ratios. Ability to sell inventory and collect receivables. This is, this is really uh, re efficiency, efficiency ratios. Ability to pay long-term debt is solvency. Um, profitability is profitability. And finally, uh, analyze stock as an investment. I don't know if this is really the right term, but it's kind of marketability or market factors. So ratio analysis. Um, a, a single ratio by itself is not very meaningful. Uh, I have uh, in prior podcasts kind of mentioned um, areas like this where we we can see one ratio and maybe that's very good for a company. That doesn't necessarily mean the company is performing well. It just means it's performing well in that one area. As you saw from the previous slide, there's like five areas that we would be concerned about. So a single ratio itself is not very meaningful. We want to kind of take all of the ratios together as a whole. And in doing so, we also want to make comparisons. And we have three different types of comparisons here. All are very valid. We might compare intra-company. How are we doing this year compared to last year and previous years? We might compare intercompany. How are we doing versus our primary competitor? Or we might compare, and I shouldn't say or, and we would compare against industry averages. How are we doing against the other companies in our industry? So, again, the first group uh, really relate to liquidity. So, liquidi liquidity ratios measure the short term ability of a company to meet its obligations and to meet unexpected needs for cash. Short-term creditors such as bankers and suppliers are particularly interested in assessing liquidity. Uh, the ratios that we're going to focus on are um, the current, uh, excuse me, working capital, the current ratio, and the acid test ratio. The next group are efficiency ratios. Efficiency ratios measure how effectively a company utilizes its assets and how well it manages its liabilities. Share, shareholders who have provided capital to management to acquire assets are most uh, concerned about efficiency. Uh, the efficiency ratios that we're going to focus on are inventory turnover, accounts receivable turnover, and um, days sales and receivable. Solvency ratios uh, measure the ability of a company to survive over a long period of time. Um, the two that we're going to focus on here are the debt ratio and times interest earned, which really is the number of times interest has been earned. Um, these ratios provide information about our ability to pay debt. The profitability ratios. Uh, they measure the income and operating success of a company over a given period of time. Uh, obviously, income or the lack thereof affects the a company's ability to obtain debt and equity financing, uh, affects their liquidity, uh, liquidity position, and also their ability to grow. Uh, there are four ratios in this category that we're going to focus on. Return on sales, return on assets, return on equity, and uh, earnings per share. Marketability ratios, again, I don't, this may not exactly be the right term, but it's, you know, market factors or things which affect the market price of the stock. So uh, I'm calling a marketability. I think that sort of goes in line with the other things that we've done. Um, these are used to evaluate stock performance and the attractiveness in the stock market. Uh, stockholders and other investors are usually interested in the market price of a corporation's common stock. The two ratios that we're going to focus on here are the price, er price earnings ratio and the dividend yield ratio. Okay, so um, some red flags as it relates to financial statement analysis. What we are hoping through all of this analysis, what we're looking to detect are some of these issues. Does a company have earning problems? Um, 
Do they have cash flow problems or decreases in cash flow? Do they have too much debt? Um, do they have an inability to collect from their customers? Are they building up too much inventory? What are their trends in sales, inventory, and receivable? So all of these things are potential red flags. Now, if a company has a lot of strong ratios and one that isn't so strong, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would be a bad investment or the company's going out of business. But if we start to see a company that has a lot of problems in different areas, that, again, would be a red flag for um, investment purposes. The last thing I want to mention to you then is, um, as I've just mentioned, a whole bunch of different ratios. What I have then done is I've tried to create a podcast for each one of the ratios. So they're fairly short. Uh, I didn't want to lump a bunch of them together because if you have to go back and, and you know, you want to watch a particular ratio after the fact, you're working on a problem, you don't understand it, I want to make that just a very um, easy and quick thing for you to do. So uh, the next, uh, I don't know how many there are, 10, 15, no, there's more than 10, uh, about 15 ratios are then all going to be very small uh, podcasts.